Now, before we get into today's text, which, which is verse 20 to 24, Matthew 11, verse 20 to 24, um, I missed a very important verse last week. And um, the funniest part was that, that the title of my message was surrounded around that verse. And, um, and, and I don't know, it's, I blame you guys because I just, I just kept preaching and I got distracted. And um, you guys are such good listeners and encouragers that I just, I skipped, I skipped the verse. I skipped, um, I skipped the verse and I went over time anyways because I heard somebody complaining about that. But I'm not going not gonna to point out anybody. Um, yeah, and so I go over time and I miss the verse right. that I'm supposed to talk about. And so you brought your Bibles? Amen. All right. This is a Bible study. Yes. Amen. Um, okay. So, so chapter 11 and uh, the verse there is verse 12. See, you, you know. You know what verse I missed. You know, in fact, when I started the Gospel of Matthew, people were asking me, hey, are you going to get to this verse? Because, you know, I said, I'll get to, I'll get to this verse. I promise. Um, okay, and so the verse there in Matthew eleven twelve 12 is, is, is Jesus says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence. Has suffered violence. How many of you have a footnote over that verse? You have a footnote? If you don't have a footnote, it's time to graduate and get a better Bible. That wasn't a shot. That wasn't a shot. It'll just help you. If, if your Bible has footnotes, it'll, it'll point to the original language. Um, what does your footnote say if you have a footnote? Okay, so I heard forcefully advancing. I heard it's gotten by force. Any coming, violence. coming violently. Yeah. Violent, assault. violent assaults. Did you know your Bible has footnotes? Yeah. It's important. And then it also has cross references. I'm going to do a couple years ago. I did a I did a, a mini series on how to study the Bible. I'm going to do another another mini series on how to study the Bible because it's been a couple years and and we could use a refresh. Amen. Um, and so, and so, and so, he says, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, or your, your translation might say, has been coming violently, and the violent take it by force. The violent take it by, take it by force. The violent take it by force. From, from until the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force force. What does this verse mean? Does it promote violence? Does it promote that you and I um, are to become uh, aggressive in terms of our, our Christianity? Um, no doubt this verse has been taken out of context and has been, has been twisted and misused. Um, this, this would have been the verse that probably um, stirred up even some of the crusaders who, who understood this idea of, of violently advancing the kingdom of God. And so, and so um, and instead of looking at things in the context, asking some deeper questions, uh, what they were led to do was, was, was try to advance the kingdom of God, similar to how, how Muslims advance their religion. Religion, and that is by taking territory and by force. And so, and so hence the crusaders who, who, are, who are now violently taken. And if you studied church, church history, you would know, you would know how, how Christianity became the capital religion of, of, of Rome and, and, and the misunderstanding of now people being forced to become Christ, Christians um, um, because, of, because, of, because of Constantine. And so um, if you don't know history, by the way, I would really encourage you to in, on your own time uh, to, to look up church history and, and how things progress and how things happened and how people misuse Christianity because they removed the gospel and they thought Christianity was just another religion and so, and so they were just led by rules and things that we need to do. Right? And so there was this genuine belief in that day and age that if we violently advance the kingdom, if we violently take territory, then God is going to be pleased and our nation is going to gain favor. This was a genuine belief they had. 
Like they genuinely believed it. How many know you can genuinely believe in some wrong things? Hello? In fact, if, if it's, it's, one of the, it's one of the greatest ways to know whether or not you are, you are growing as a Christian. That if you cannot look at your past self and say, I disagree, you're probably not growing. Somebody needs to write that down, stick it on their mirror so you're reminded of that every day. If you don't disagree with your past self in some ways, you're not growing. Thank you. I appreciate the amens. Okay, so, 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 so it, has been, it has been misused. Um, um, who, who during Jesus' days would have probably had their own version of this verse as a mantra? There was a, there was a particular group. The zealots. The zealots, right? Um, and, and does anyone remember the, the zealot in the group with, the, with Jesus? Simon. So there was, there was Simon Peter, and then there was Simon the zealot. And Simon the zealot belonged to a group who believed this idea of, of, of being militant, that we are going to take over for God through violence, through being militant. And so they were trained in the arts and they were trained in, in how to use weapons. And they were, because remember, uh, the understanding, and, we, and we've gone over this, was that when the Messiah comes, he's going to be a militant warrior. And, and so he's going to need an army. And so we, we, are, we are preparing ourselves for when the Messiah comes so we can violently take. And so they would have had their own version of this, this verse as, as the Crusaders would have had their own version um, uh, and use it, as, use it as a mantra because, because they thought they were doing God. They thought they were doing God a favor. You know, you're, you're very likely to get things wrong when you begin to live in a way where you tell yourself, I'm doing God a favor. I'm doing God a favor. I'm doing, like my favorite is when, they, when, people, when people tell me, I'm fasting for the Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm fasting for the Lord. For the, for the, the Lord? You're, you're fasting for the Lord? What is he in need of? You know what I'm saying? Like I was speaking, I was speaking somewhere at a conference, a young adult conference, and, and the theme of the conference was 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 faithful, was faithful, and and I, and I began to share with with them that that God doesn't benefit from your faithfulness, you do. So you're not fasting for the Lord; you're fasting for yourself. So so the only person that benefits from you being faithful, you being obedient. Is you. It's not God. We're not doing God favors. We didn't. We don't get to submit our resume. You know what I mean to God and say, "Man, look how much I can benefit you." Hello. You know. You know what I'm saying? Like God doesn't call in a meeting and say, "Man, look at this resume that just got submitted. It's crazy. My kingdom is about to blow up." That doesn't happen. That doesn't. That doesn't. That doesn't happen. But but where were we? Where were we? Um, the, the, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven suffers, suffer violence. Now, now context, context, right? So, so the way I want you, and I'm going to bring this out even in, 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 in the mini course I do about how to study your Bible, there's two levels to context. The first level to context is immediate context. Someone say immediate. Immediate, immediate context is what is happening in the immediate verses around this verse. Okay? Does that make sense? And so that's immediate context. Then there is broad context. Broad context is, 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 is how does this verse now relate to the rest of this book or the rest of this letter? Uh, uh, letter. So if you were reading a letter in, in, you know, from the epistles, you, the broader context would be the context of the letter. Right? And, and then there is, there is the much broader context, which is the totality of Scripture. How does this relate to the totality of Scripture? Does it, does, it, does it correlate with all of what Scripture says? So there's the immediate, there's the broad, and there's the much broader. Does that make sense? Okay, so what is the immediate context of this verse? Christian persecution. Who, what spurred, yeah, go ahead, say it. John being in prison. John being in prison is the reason Jesus is saying these words. 
Because John sends his disciples. His disciples ask Jesus a question. Jesus answers them. They walk away. Jesus turns to the crowd and begins to speak concerning John. That's the immediate context. You understand? Broad context is Jesus has come down from the Sermon on the Mount. He is, he is bringing now the kingdom of God into the lives of people. We see in chapter 8 and chapter 9 how he does that. And, and in chapter 11 and in chapter 12, the broad context is how people respond. How are people, so, so you have all these different responses to the kingdom now. And John's response from prison is, are you really the one? Are you really the one? And so Jesus begins to now talk to the crowd concerning, concerning, concerning John. Um, and, and, so, and so that's the context. So we see the context. We're okay with the context, right? Um, does, John, does John's life get saved? Well, does, does, does Jesus rescue John from prison? Does Jesus stop John's beheading? No. Jesus, Jesus does not. Jesus does not. And so the advancing of the kingdom, we can come to a conclusion that the advancing of the kingdom does not necessarily have to do with earthly circumstances. Right? It, it doesn't have to do with the lack of persecution. And so, and so sometimes we can think, we can think man, the reason, the reason we're not seeing a Christian nation is because people aren't violently advancing the kingdom. Come on, somebody. But if you understand the context, we can understand, well, that's not necessarily a good interpretation of knowing whether or not the kingdom is advancing because Jesus said persecution is going to come. So immediate context doesn't line up with that. The broader context doesn't line up with that. The rest of the, rest of the New Testament epistles don't line up with that because Paul wrote most of his letters from prison. prison. So this is how context matters. So, so that's not the case. So then, so then, so then what, what, else, what else could it mean? Now, if you read the original language and some of your translations, the footnote is good because, because it, gives, it gives a closer hint to, to the phrase and the wordings of the original language that rather than the kingdom suffering violence, the kingdom has been coming violently. The kingdom has been coming Violently, Another transition might say that the kingdom is advancing with force. It's advancing forcefully. Now, now, it does not say Christianity is advancing forcefully. This is important. It says the kingdom. Now, in order for us to understand the, 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 the terms advancing forcefully, we have to understand what kingdom means, right? Here's what the kingdom is not. The kingdom is not the church. Right? The kingdom, literally, we've talked about this. The kingdom is the rule and reign of God. Right? So if you even look at the makeup of the word, king, dumb, the king's domain. So, so it has to do with God's domain, God's rule, God's reign. So Jesus comes to bring God's rule and God's reign. Right? So now Jesus is saying God's rule and God's reign advances forcefully. Now, does this mean that like Peter, we take out our swords and begin cutting ears? Is that the forceful way of the kingdom's advancement? No, we know that because Jesus tells Peter, Peter, put, put your sword away, man. What are you, you're, you're embarrassing me. You know what I mean? Heals the guy's, heals the guy's ear. Now, now to explain, explain this, I'm going to call Pastor Jason up. Everyone, welcome Pastor Jay. All right. He said, he said he'd be willing. He said he'd be willing to help me out. Okay. So the kingdom is, the kingdom is advancing, advancing forcefully. Can you see Pastor Jay? All right. Beautiful. Um, here's, here's what you're going to do. Okay. I'm going to stand in front of you and you're going to, and you're going to stick your hands out and you're going to move forward. Are you moving forward? Okay, stop. Okay, let's go back. Okay, let's do that again. You're going to move forward. Now, how many know I'm moving with Pastor Jason? Okay, let's go back. 
Now, now, right? It's like the the rewind button on um, on your on your VCR. How many know what a VCR is? Okay, good. <laughs> uh, how many don't know what a VCR? Right? You're like a VC who? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna ask Pastor Jason a question. Pastor Jason, are you using any force? Yes, I am. Right now? Not right now, no. Right now, are you using force? Nope. No, you're not. Mm-hmm. Pastor Jason is not using force. Right. Okay? I want you to move forward. Are you using force? Yep, absolutely. Stop. Are you using force right now? No. I want you to push me forward. Are you using force? Yes. Okay. Now, do you notice that Pastor Jason is only using force when he is advancing? When he is moving forward, when he is not moving forward, he does not need to use force. Now, I want you to see Pastor Jay as one kingdom, and I want you to see me as an individual who's part of a different kingdom. Okay? Now, kingdoms don't mean countries. So, so it's not like I have a Canadian passport and Pastor Jay has a Jamaican. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. Kingdom means rule and reign. Okay? So, so I'm of a different rule of a rule and reign, and he's of the kingdom of God, where God rules and reigns. Now, in order for the kingdom of God to advance, there has to be use of force. Advance, Pastor Jay. All right. He's, he's using force. Now, now this, this makes sense. Thank you. Let's give it up for Pastor Jay. Now, now, now you, you, you see that. So, so the kingdom of God, God's rule and God's reign, when it has entered into the earth, where there, where there, is, where there is now other kingdoms, right. other entities and people and personalities and spiritual things ruling and reigning, in order for God's kingdom to advance, it has to exercise force. Because it's coming against opposition. It's coming against rule and reign of a different kind. Rule and reign of your flesh. Rule and reign of the enemy who is the prince of the air. So, so, so it is met with another kingdom. And so in order for God's rule and reign to move into the lives of people, other things have to move out. And the only way other things move out is if there is force. And the only way the kingdom is advances is if there is force. Does that make sense? This is why when God comes into your life, all of a sudden he gives himself permission to move things around. Now you don't call it the force of his rule and reign, but that's what it is. He has given himself permission to rearrange the furniture. And in some cases, to get rid of some furniture. Hello. So, so, so that's, that's what it means that the kingdom, kingdom comes with violence. The kingdom suffers violence. That's what it means. The kingdom advances forcefully. And then the second part of that scripture is, is the violent take it by force. Now, if you go into the original language... A better, tra- I don't know if anyone has a footnote on, on this part of the scripture, but the better translation is the forceful lay hold of it. The forceful lay hold of it. So, so let's, let's read this again now in, 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 in Pastor Moses' translation. The kingdom of God advances forcefully. And the forceful lay hold of it. The forceful lay hold of it. What is it? The kingdom. What is the kingdom? God's rule and reign. Right? So the forceful are those who see the kingdom as the better option. Who see the kingdom as greater than, which is why Jesus said, even the least in my kingdom is greater than the greatest, apost- or the greatest prophet being John. Right. 
And so remember I told you that that has to do with two different eras. It doesn't have to do with comparing John with, with, an, with a disciple. It has to do with the era of the law and prophets and the era of king, the kingdom. That this kingdom is greater than anything that we have experienced, anything that has gone before, any movements of God in the past. This kingdom is greater than. And the forceful lay hold of it. Those who can see its worth. Lay hold of it. Lay hold of it. Lay hold of it. Lay hold of it. Uh, 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 um, didn't, didn't Jesus give a parable for, for the kingdom of God? For the kingdom of God is, is like a man who found treasure hidden in a field. And, 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 and the Bible says in, in all his joy, he sold all that he had to purchase the land, to purchase the field. So, so, so he is the forceful laying hold of the kingdom. Does that, does that make sense? So, so, so in other words, in other words, you, you see the value of the kingdom. Now, now it does not mean, it does not mean because now, now we can get into, we can get into error, which, which is that, which is that in order for us to receive salvation, we are the ones doing it. So you, you, run into, you run into a problem there, right? So that's not what it means. It would, be, it would be something to the effect of, it would be something to the effect of when Jesus says, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out, use force. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. For it is better for you to enter heaven with one eye, hello, than, than hell with both your eyes. Because you could not see the value of the kingdom. You could not see the benefit of the abundant life that only comes when you let me rule and reign. You chose to keep your eye. You, you chose not to seize it. You chose not to lay hold of the kingdom. Does that make sense? So my, my question last week was supposed to be, are you the violent? Are you the violent? Are you the violent? Are you the forceful? Are you those who see God's rule and God's reign as the greatest treasure? And are you willing to lay hold of it? Are you willing to lay hold of it? For Jesus taught us to pray. What? He taught us to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Jesus teaches his disciples, here's how I want you to start your prayer. Lay hold of the kingdom. Amen. You understand? So hopefully that, that provides you with some clarity. If, if that provides you with some clarity, just wave at me. All right, let's, um, let's close in prayer because I'm tired. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So we'll, we'll cut that portion and we'll, we'll, post, we'll post that portion separately. And um, tonight's session, Matthew chapter 11, you're like, um, how long is this going to be now tonight? Because he's doing two messages in one. Okay, Matthew chapter 11. We're going to read verses uh, 20 to 24. 20 to 24. 20 to 24. Okay, here's what it says. Then he, being Jesus, began to denounce the cities where most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works had done, been done in you, um, if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom than for 
you. How do you feel after that scripture? Uplifted, encouraged? Amen. <laughs> right? That's, 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 that's a heavy one for, for sure. And, and, and even for some people, especially if you're new to the faith, it can be a little bit confusing because we've talked, about, we've talked about how compassionate Jesus is. We've talked about how much mercy Jesus shows, that how he, how he is able to have eyes and, and a heart that the religious of the day don't have. And so he sees the marginalized. He sees the oppressed. And he, and he goes out to them. And he says, he says, you are the blessed ones. Blessed are those right that 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 whole beatitude thing is is god giving an invitation to the marginalized and the oppressed to be the first ones to enter into his kingdom and so this passage you 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 kind of reach this point where where you're, you're kind of feeling a little confused and you're like wow jesus jesus he sounds a little mean he sounds a little aggressive Right? And so remember, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago that, that, that it's important for us to have a complete view of Jesus. A complete view of Jesus. That we see Jesus and all his aspects. That we see Jesus with all his teachings, even the teaching that makes us feel uncomfortable. Right? Now, this is one of those passages that if you were reading this in your devotional time, you know what I mean? You don't stop there. Hello? Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, um, this is your devotional time, and you go, man, that's a, that's a, harsh, that's a harsh passage. Um, I don't think I'm supposed to stop here. And so, you, and so you continue reading until you read something encouraging, and the very next text has to do with uh, Jesus giving us, giving us rest. And so you go, okay, okay, this is, this is a good place to end my devotional. So you close your Bible, and you go, Jesus, thank you for the rest that you give me. Thank you for your burden. Thank you, you for your yoke. And can we just be honest? We, you know what I mean? Like if I was reading this and, and I was spending time with, you know, uh, oh, wow, okay, let's continue. He, he, hello. And so this is, this is one of those, this is one of those, this is one of those, this is one of those passages, um, but I think it's important. This is, why, this is why I love going through it verse by verse because you don't have the option to skip over things, right? And even as, even as, even as a teacher and a preacher, I am forced to sit with uncomfortable passages that a lot of people, preachers and teachers and pastors skip over. They, they, they skip over. But, but I love what Paul says in one of his letters that, that at the end of his life, he's not going to have any guilt because he's taught the whole counsel of God. Right? And so, and so that's, that's important for us, even, even for you, that you study the whole counsel of God. That, that, that at, on the day of judgment, you're, you're not there claiming ignorance, like, oh, I never read that part of Scripture, like, right? And Jesus is going to be like, you had my Bible. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, technology. Come on, somebody. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate your time. Will you please like and subscribe so that you will get notifications? And by the way, your comments and your feedback are very important to us. Even sermon series and messages that you would like to hear about, please let us know. Drop us a line. We would love to incorporate that into our teaching and our preaching. We appreciate you and thank you.